Napoli certainly left it late at the Stadio Olimpico. Fabian Ruiz with a 94th minute winner. That sent them top. They've since been dislodged. Milan have drawn each of their last two matches in the league. Just down the road from here in Salerno and most recently last Friday night at home to Udinese. It's a case of what might have been for the Rossoneri, but it is so close here between Inter, Napoli and Milan and potentially Juventus who quietly, softly, softly have crept to within four points of these two sides before the start of play. The city has been a buzz all week. This is a game that had been circled in the calendar anyway, but it has taken on increased significance since Fabian Ruiz scored that goal to beat Maurizio Sarri's Lazio side. They are very superstitious in Naples, and there is a belief, not that they would necessarily mention it to you, but that goal might yet lead to greater things and a first league title since 1990. Milan's wait has been more than a decade since Max Allegri won the league title in 2011. And it is almost a straight shootout now between the three sides at the top of the pile. Who can get the most points in the eight, in the 11 matches remaining? This one and then double figures, 10 games to come after this. We are into the home straight of what has been an incredible Serie A season and there are still many more twists and turns to come. Once again, a watching brief for Napoli's all-time leading goal scorer, Tris Mertens. But they might turn to him, depending on how the game pans out. A series of six-pointers can yet decide the destination of the Scudetto and tonight's match at the Maradona is the biggest game of the season so far. A win for either Napoli or Milan would send them to the top of Serie A. A draw and they would both join Inter on 58 points. It is the tightest title race in recent memory. There are three sides involved, there could yet be a fourth depending on how Juventus fare in coming weeks. But this game is absolutely monumental. Napoli against Milan, second against third at the Maradona, Spalletti up against Pioli. the headline maker, the poster boy for Napoli's title push this season, Fabian Ruiz, with that all-important goal in the capital. But Milan, for the second season in a row, are there or thereabouts. Runners up last term, eventually into cantered away to the Scudetto, but Milan were winter champions last season. They faltered in the spring. They are trying to now keep pace with both Inter and Napoli. Alessio Romagnoli is injured, so Davide Calabria wears the armband for Milan. Lorenzo Insigne scored himself in Rome. It was a big goal for Napoli. The vastly experienced Daniele Orsato is the man in charge. His 254th game at this level. He's joined by Giacomo Camplone, the fourth official. Paolo Valeri is the VAR. Spalletti finally has a full squad to pick from and makes just one change from the stunning victory at Lazio. Lobotka has shaken off a hamstring injury and replaces Diego Denme 
The big boost comes on the bench with the return of Lozano and uh, Zombo Ongisa. Four alterations for Milan to the team that held Inter in the Cup on Tuesday. Calabria is restored at the expense of Florenzi, while Calulu deputises for the injured Romagnoli. Tonali missed the Cup game through suspension and he replaces Krunic, while Junior Messias is preferred to Salamakis. There is the manager of the month for February, Luciano Spalletti, still unbeaten in the league in 2022. And he's up against Stefano Pioli, who has never beaten Spalletti when they have met in the past. This is his 10th attempt to get the better of the Tuscan tactician. Ibrahimovic back amongst the substitutes for Milan, a big boost. We might see him later on, but this is a huge game. Manuel Pascali, which way do you see it going? A great game of football because both teams love to play football, love to play the ball, keep possession. I'm expecting goals, I'm expecting great fun, so let's see what's going to happen. It is Napoli in the blue, Azzurri, despite the fact that they were initially earmarked to play in a special edition shirt. That has eventually been signed and auctioned off to raise funds for Ukrainian refugees. There was uproar in the city at the colour of that shirt. Di Lorenzo marching his way through. He and Teo Hernandez have gone down. Rafael Liao dispossessed by Lobotka. His importance showcased immediately there. Napoli making a fast start. Di Lorenzo with the cross. This is Victor Osimen. And Zielinski was waiting. Smashed away by Junior Messias. Yeah, good defending by Messias. Because he's there, Osimen. Great layoff for Zielinski, who was ready to, to shot in goal. Good cover. And now, corner kick for Napoli. The first corner after 70 seconds of the match, taken short by Politano. Here he is again, Politano's delivery, and Rahmani didn't really connect. Yes, they played a short corner, just trying to exploit Politano, one against one there, decent poly, soft one, Rahmani tried, kind of volley, not precise, Magnan is telling to his players to switch on, because one minute to go, one minute's gone, and Napoli already got a corner kick. Napoli picking up where they left off in the capital. They had lots of momentum from that dramatic late equaliser from Fabian Ruiz. What a beauty it was. Milan, meanwhile, have just lost a bit of momentum with those consecutive draws in matches they would have expected to win. Away at bottom side, Salernitana, and home to Udinese. Tonali. Big boost for Milan to have him back. He missed the Copritania semi final first leg with Inter on Tuesday through suspension. Koulibaly, Fabian Ruiz, Napoli moving the ball crisply and swiftly. Cheered on by 40,000 tonight. We are at 75% capacity. Mario Rui, Insigne, Fabian Ruiz looking for a seaman. It's a good take. Now he tests Kalulu for pace. Politano, Di Lorenzo calling for it. Well timed, that challenge by Rafael Liao, and now Milan can go the other way. Rafael Liao, Fabian got a toe to the ball. And now it's Napoli in possession with Piotr Zielinski. Yes, but just three minutes gone, and they're showing that both teams are going for it. Ozyman, great work on the right side, trying to find Politano there. One against one with Hernandez Leao. Great defensive display to help his teammates. Koulibaly. He'll get the return from Mario Rui. Koulibaly's cross. Swept away by Pierre Kalulu. Napoli started on the front foot there. Great run by Koulibaly. Not the best ball in with his left foot. He tried to play that killer pass in between the defenders and the goalie. No precise, but Napoli really, really on for it. Lobotka, Mario Rui, Insigne, 
unable to find Lobotka. Calabria keeps his balance under pressure from Lorenzo Insigne. Mignon up against Victor Osimhen tonight, the pair former teammates with Lille in France. Milan looking to settle here against a partisan crowd. Kissier's flick on Giroud, and here's Teo Hernandez. Giroud, Kissier, space here for Benasser. Giroud now, Benasser. Was he caught by Koulibaly? Well, just for a moment, Orsato put the whistle in his mouth and then almost changed his mind. And Milan can't believe it. They're going to check it. Orsato thought he was going to whistle there. There is a contact between Benasser and Koulibaly, but no penalty. That is experience for you, Daniele Orsato, with more than 250 games in the Italian top flight. Had the whistle ready, just as he tried to ascertain whether or not there was contact between Koulibaly and Benasser and whether that contact then warranted a penalty. In the end, the decision was play on. It is 148 now, the meetings between these two sides in the Italian top flight. Insigne around the corner, Di Lorenzo with time and space, or Simon calling for it. Di Lorenzo's cross, it doesn't reach the Nigerian, and that wasn't a difficult ball, was it, Manuel? And now, Daniele Orsato is going across. I think, I don't know if he's going to check, I don't think so, the penalty situation, but yes, he's in the position. Here we're going to see again, I think Koulibaly is just standing, there isn't enough for a penalty in my opinion, I think the referee got it right, but yes, you say it right, Di Lorenzo had the opportunity to play a better ball into Ozyman that he was peeling away from his defender. In the end it was just a call to order for Stefano Pioli after his protestations, Politano for Di Lorenzo now, safe hands from Mike Mignon. Yeah, that's something that Milan can suffer in this left wing area because obviously Leao is very, very, he's an attacker, so he has to track some Di Lorenzo runs because Teo Hernandez went with Politano. Fortunately for AC Milan, Magnani is very focused there. He caught the ball. Stefano Pioli feeling naturally aggrieved because there was contact between Benasser and Koulibaly, their knees collided. It was a risky challenge from Koulibaly, dived in a touch and Benasser got to the ball before him, just as Mario Rui did here ahead of Kessier. Zielinski beaten to it by Benasser, but he concedes another corner. Yes, Mario Rui read it well. So there wasn't a, a good pass from Calabria towards Kessier, but Mario Rui, the experience, read it and just tried to play it in the ball. Good cover by Benasser. Napoli and certainly began the match on the front foot. And now there is a yellow card, presumably for Stefano Pioli, is it, for continuing to protest? And there you can see the Milan head coach has said too much, presumably to the fourth official Giacomo Camplone, because with this atmosphere there's no way Orsato would have heard it from that sort of distance. Insigne has had to wait, once again Napoli take it short, Mario Rui, Zielinski curls it in, away by Kalulu, Lobotka, Fabian Ruiz, that's a good ball, Di Lorenzo, and Mignon once again able to gather, but Milan are having to defend deep in the early stages, well in by Koulibaly, but then Insigne tried to play it back to him. Junior Messias for the first time. Benasser. It was a fairly cagey match on Tuesday, that semi-final first leg in the Coppa Italia. Milan and Inter drawing 0-0, they'll do it all again in late April. Mario Rui, 
Lopotka, Mario Rui again. It's just played it into touch. Good pressing from Milan. Yeah, good pressure by AC Milan, even Benacer. Going to try to be very, very aggressive against two, one of the two centre backs. Junior Messias. And still, trying to find Calabria. Once again, the challenge made by Mario Rui. A spell for Milan in the opposition half now. Calabria with the throw, Junior Messias. Zielinski put a foot in and cleared away by Mario Rui. Wonderful hold that play by Osime. Now trying to stretch Kalulu, just took it into touch. But they are petrified of Victor Osimen. You can see that Milan doubling up immediately on him. Insigne has found Politano between the lines. Still Matteo Politano. Brilliant block that from Tomori. Osimen looked offside. That's what Teo Hernandez is suggesting. And Daniele Orsato agreed. Yes, a, a beautiful block by Tomori. Politano had the chance maybe to play into Zelinski. Now the offside position by Hosiman. But then he could have waited a little bit longer to force Tomori to run into him and then place it a killer pass, the last pass for Zelinski one side. Even Di Lorenzo on the other side was coming through. This is a penalty claim for AC Milan. There is a slight touch, not enough for the referee. Benassay, certainly from that angle, did appear to already be going down when he connected with Koulibaly's knee. Now Mario Ruiz hurt the small of his back. He's landed awkwardly and he will require some treatment. A good defensive display by Mario Rui, because Mignon, we know, can shot the ball away for 60 or 70 metres there, and Messias was ready to run into the goal, but Mario Rui controlled that, it. That's a point that Luciano Spalletti addressed in his press conference yesterday. He said Milan do like to mix things up. They can play short, pretty football, but they can also be direct. Route one from the goalkeeper much like Napoli do with Osimen, so there are parallels between these two teams. Rafael Leal miscontrols, Fabian Ruiz, Lobotka, Osimen for Zielinski. Here's Di Lorenzo now. Politano had to slam the brakes on. Rachmani was almost being told who to pass there by Spalletti, first he said Lobo, and then said Zielu, telling him to pass to which teammates, but Rahmani has been a very reliable defender for Napoli this season, the one constant at the back, with Koulibaly missing through injury first, and the Africa Cup of Nations latterly. Di Lorenzo, Fabian Ruiz, away goes Osimhen. Still Osimhen, it's too quick for Tamori. Was he caught there? It's just a corner, but now Napoli are claiming they should have a penalty. Yes, but tail check. That's a great ball by Fabian Ruiz. Great ball in. Osimhen, drive the ball towards there. Once in, Kalula, I think he got bit Osimhen legs. We're going to check it again if there is a contact between it's that Tomori. challenge there from Tomori on Osimen. It's Kalulu who makes the block. But Osimen felt he was impeded just before he tried to play the ball across. Daniele Orsato said there was nothing wrong with the challenge. And so we've had two close calls when it comes to penalties. Neither one has been given, just a corner. Politano with the corner, headed away by Tomori. That's a fine challenge from Benacer on Insigne, Lobotka. This time Kessier steps in. This was a decent ball in by Politano, and three big boys, Napoli big boys, were attacking the front post area. But Tomori defended so well, and now Orsato is telling purely something. It's already been booked, so he can ill afford to keep complaining, Orsato said, I've had enough, I've warned you once, you've got the caution, any more, 
and you will be sent to the stands. And Stefano Pioli doesn't often lose his cool. We do have plenty of hotheads in the technical areas up and down the peninsula. Gasperini and Mourinho, chief amongst them. But not so necessarily Stefano Pioli. That shows just what's at stake. Politano has managed to find a cross. Tomori stepped in with his chest. I don't think Pater is enough thinking. Referee was spot on here in this situation, but AC Milan tried to be. Yes, he's telling the players it's just chest. It is a good appointment as the match official tonight. He's always no nonsense, Daniele Orsato. He won't stand for any back chat, as we've already seen. Rahmani striding away from Shiru. That's a fine pass to find Insigne. Insigne looking for Politano. That's something he used to do with Callejon. Not quite the same result as years gone by. Yes, it's a good idea. He said it right with Callejon. They, they created so many goals, so many chances. But Napoli uh, under pressure. With Daisy Milan, Rahmani, great switch of play to Insigne. Calabria. Benacer. Rafael Liao, Milan's main danger man, advantage played. Rafael Liao, Kessier, Rafael Liao again. Rahmani did just about enough, Insigne now. And Mario Rui will clear, but that is a reminder of one of Milan's danger men and what a threat he poses, Rafael Liao. Yes, but there's something uh, AC Milan will work on all day, all, all, the, all the game, because they will try to find the two against one on the side especially considering that on one side Insigne and the other side Politano they have to help Di Lorenzo and Mario Rui or will be troubles because AC Milan got Tio plus Leo Leao or on the other side Calabria and Messias here the chest by Tomori good defending from Ficayo Tomori <laughs> Napoli came into this match ahead of Milan on goal difference Ultimately, it's head-to-head, -head, which is the decider. Napoli did win the reverse fixture by a goal to nil. Elif Elmas with the early header at San Siro. But given we haven't played both matches between the two sides, goal difference remains the determining factor for the moment. And that's why Napoli's win at Lazio last weekend put them top ahead of Milan, albeit on the same points. That's where they remain. And if this scoreline were to hold, it would be into 58, Napoli 58, Milan 58. An astonishing circumstance. Di Lorenzo won't keep it in play. Milan growing into this game after what had been a fast start from Napoli. who missed the reverse fixture and they really felt his absence keenly in that game he had the flu Teo Hernandez has done very well but Fabian Ruiz got back that is a corner however a good job by Teo Hernandez under pressure he uses his body strength to win the corner and in this kind of game part the dead ball situation could be the game changer even if See the AC Milan got yes decent threat with Giroud or one of the two centre backs. We saw in the reverse fixture just how important set pieces can be. Elmas on that occasion with an earpost run to meet Zielinski's corner. Now it's Milan looking to get their own back from a dead ball situation. Tonali with the corner and it was headed goalwards. But instead, there's a foul on Mario Rui, who didn't seem at all involved in this. I'm not sure if it was Junior Macias who got his head to it, but free kick has gone the way of Napoli for a foul on Mario Rui. And it would be interesting if the ball would have been in, and the referee spotted the fall on Mario Rui and took this decision. 
It was indeed Junior Messias credit to Ospina for repelling the effort. Milan unhappy, but that just goes to show, Giroud continues to complain, that any infraction will be sanctioned in the box, whether it's relevant or not. Ossiman. Insigne picking up the pieces. Lobotka under pressure, he was tripped. He knows it, man, it's so hard for, for the centre-backs, because he's a strong, he got pace, it's very, very hard to defend against, because he can go short and shield the ball, or go long and use his pace. Two teams have gone the distance before in a title race. One successfully for each club, Fabian Ruiz. Now Di Lorenzo, through it goes towards Ossiman. Got the shot away early, Kalulu matched him stride for stride, it's a goal kick. A great football by Napoli, starting with Ospina, waiting to Fabian Ruiz to receive the ball free, and now a decent ball by Di Lorenzo. With a great run by Ozyman behind the first centre back, the center, the second one, Kalulu, did very, very well to follow Ozyman. Benasser claiming he was fouled, it is just a throw to Napoli, who finished two points clear of Milan the last time they won the Scudetto back in 1990 under Alberto Bigot. Teo Hernandez. This is Ben Asir. Rafael Liao in a pocket of space. Good feed from Rafael Liao. Fabian Ruiz came back to make the challenge and win the goal kick. That's what AC Milan wanted. Would they want to isolate Rafael Liao? Great piece of skill, quick fit here. With not Mike against Di Lorenzo and then Fabian Ruiz. Intelligent cover there. Make Di Lorenzo tried to do likewise with Fabian Ruiz. It came off the first time, but not the second. Still been a very good calendar year of 2022. It's been a great season all round for Rafael Liao. Six goals in all competitions since the turn of the year. Well, Seaman is down, and Mario Rui will allow his teammate to get some treatment. There's a long ball by Ospina. He tried to chase it down. So generous, this player, kind of striker you want in your team. Elif every time, everything he does, full of effort there, with the ball in the air. It was just an arm to the ribs there from Junior Messias, that's why Osiman went down, but I'm not sure there are many teams that have a better left side than Milan, with Teo Hernandez and Rafael Liao certainly going forward. no slouches themselves with the likes of Zielinski and Fabian Ruiz in the midfield. Insigne now back amongst the goals from open play. That wonderful opener at Lazio was his first in the league. That wasn't a penalty. Two coaches, neither of whom have ever won the Scudetto. That is the quirk of this season's three-horse title race. Simone Inzaghi, Luciano Spalletti and Stefano Pioli, all nearly men, none of them have ever won the league title. And the coach in fourth at this moment in time, Juventus's Max Allegri has won six league titles. It will be interesting to see whether the Bianconeri can force themselves into the hunt. Midway through this first half, still no real opportunities for either side. It's a risky ball towards Lobotka. Rossini, Zielinski, Mario Rui, Koulibaly, Insigne has lost it, Giroud with a lovely touch, Calabria up on his own, Rafael Liao in support, Calabria, he looked for Rafael Liao, Giroud was caught late, there might yet be a yellow card for what was that challenge, and indeed it is brandished, the first caution of the contest and Daniele Orsato saying he gave me absolutely no choice. It's a great layoff by Giroud. One touch football there.
I think, but when Calabria is driving the ball, maybe we're gonna see it again. Here they're losing possession. Then Calabria started the counter, look at Giroud, first touch ball here. I think Leao tried to, that's yes, a yellow card from the defender coming from behind. But I think Rafael Leao tried to cut in to go for goal, but there maybe he had to take a step back and receive the ball into his feet because there wasn't uh, much room in between the two defenders for Calabria to play this ball. Kalidou Koulibaly has had his name taken, the only man, incidentally, of the 22 starters that is a booking away from suspension. Teo Hernandez, Milan's next game is at home to Empoli. Giroud down getting treatment, but coming back to those two title races, Napoli finished two points clear of Milan in 1990, the so-called Fatal Verona when Milan lost against Ellis. Verona were fatal for Napoli's Champions League credentials. That is a real gash to the ankle. And Koulibaly didn't really have any intent to hurt Giroud there. But on another day, that might have warranted a red card, Manuel. Yes, these are the kind of challenges, especially with the modern start that can cut easily the opponents. I think Giroud there went to play the first touch ball and went into uh, Koulibaly foot that was up. Ibrahimovic is back, but the feeling is he doesn't have that much in the tank. Certainly it won't have been in the plan for him to play 65 minutes. So Giroud might have to soldier on for the moment. Ibrahimovic, incidentally, has missed each of the last six since hobbling off with that Achilles problem in the trap goalless draw against Juventus. Giroud has had to do overtime. We've spoken about 1990. 1988, Milan won 3-2 at the San Paolo, three games shy at the end of the season. They ended up finishing three points clear of Napoli. Napoli had been four points clear with five games to play, and that was back in the era of two points for a win. Ante Rebic is an option as a centre forward, but certainly doesn't have the same characteristics as Olivier Giroud. Yes, they are different. Physical presence for Giroud, who is doing quite well against two strong center backs Rebic is different likes to run behind by all also likes to receive the ball into the, his feet into the pockets and play the killer pass we see if Giroud Giroud really struggling here and you can understand it as well it is a significant gash on his ankle I don't care whatever age you are, it's difficult to be able to run that off. Giroud, however, in the twilight of his career, he'll turn 36 at the end of September. Politano sweeps it forward, well dealt with by Kalulu. Teo Hernandez, Benacer, that's a clever header, Rafael Liao. He's kept the ball under pressure, Rafael Liao. And Ospina had to scramble across there. It's interesting by Rafael Leao, who's been involved in the last five, ten minutes, and he's creating something, as usual, not the most powerful shot there. And he's saying to the keeper, hey, I'm here. Ospina respond responded really well after a big mistake at Canyon. He let in a tame shot from Gaston Pereiro since then. He's produced plenty of excellent stops, including from Pedro just before the Spaniard scored that stunning volleyed equaliser this time last week. David Ospina, very much Napoli's number one. Koulibaly. Mario Rui. Zielinski. It's a good ball from Mario Rui. Insigne. He's lost it easily to Teo Hernandez. Insigne stays down this time. Milan play on. Rafael Liao keeping Lobotka at bay. Now it's Teo Hernandez. That will be a corner off Di Lorenzo. Yeah, but you can see in this defensive display by Teo Hernandez, pure idea. Insigne is in this right, is in usual position. Teo Hernandez with left back with the danger and goes aggressive with him and win the ball back. Here's the shot. Rafael Liao. But now a corner kick again for AC Milan. 
It was scarfed, it was heading wide, but the fact it went through Koulibaly's legs made it slightly awkward for Ospina, who took no chances. Milan went close with their previous corner. Teo Hernandez with the set piece. It was attacked well by Giroud. Brilliant defending from Koulibaly. Raphael Liel. Lovely skill from here. Still Raphael Liel. And Tonali strikes it, but he rather rushed it. Yeah, super skills by Rafael Leal, but there it was just seconds before. Here we can see Leal's skills in between two players. Then in his mind there was touch with the right and shot with the left. But then they went ball into Tonali. But Koulibaly, great defending there in the air, because they're marking zone. And when a defender has to jump in a standing situation, it's not easy. Giroud was coming full force. Great defending by Koulibaly. Zielinski's header, Insigne won't catch up to it. Junior Messias with the pace. Milan on top at the moment. Junior Messias asking too much of Benacer. Napoli will take some breaking down. They still boast the league's best back line, just 19 in the goals against Column. But Milan are brilliant travellers. They have lost only once away all season. That crazy 4 3 defeat in Florence. And that is not a flash in the pan either. Milan took. 49 points from a possible 57 away from home last season. It's just occasionally at San Siro where they let themselves down. Junior Messias. Calabria. Well read by Fabian Ruiz. Junior Messias came back though to make sure the pass didn't reach Chossimin. Good spell this for the visitors. Kessier. from Kessier. Eased over by Rahmani, who played the ball in the view of Daniele Orsato. Di Lorenzo, that's a risky ball, and Calabria didn't believe he could get there. He settles for the throw, but that was nearly a big chance for Milan. Junior Messias now. Towards Giroud. Rafael Liao. Great feet once again in tight areas from here. Teo Hernandez. Kessier, Di Lorenzo stuck to his task, and now he needs a helping hand, no one in blue around him. Brilliant work from the Italy international. And Kalulu and Tomori doubled up, but here's Osimen. Was he caught there by Pierre Kalulu? Play continues. But he is giving them some sleepless nights there. Victor Osimen every time he has tried to isolate either Fikayo Tomori or Pierre Kalulu. The other centre back has gone across to help out. Junior Messias. This is Kessier. Giroud caught on his heels, but he'll keep it in play. Benasser. Calabria joining in. Tonali. Teo Hernandez, it's reached Giroud, this is Junior Messias. Rahmani once again, wasn't fooled by that. Good tempo to this game, Insigne. Napoli having to dig deep momentarily. Zielinski, Di Lorenzo, gets it back from Fabian Ruiz, nice patient build-up from Napoli. Stanislav Lobotka, Mario Rui. Koulibaly, Insigne. Patience from Napoli, taking their time, waiting for Milan to step out of position. Fabian Ruiz. <laughs> Rahmani tosses it long and eventually they ran out of patience. There's plenty, plenty of quality, technical ability. Yes, Rahmani passed. This was not the perfect. Spalletti was on because he was telling his players to come in and drive with the ball. Because this Milan is playing man by man everywhere. 
So if you drive the ball, you force someone to come and try to steal the ball out of you. Teo Hernandez, Labok has stepped out of position. Ben Acer, Milan streaming forward in numbers. Calabria, his touch was too heavy and Insigne won it back. Now Mario Rui, Napoli going the other way. Insigne. Mario Rui, the Rossoneri have got numbers back. perhaps not 100% fit, having missed three matches with a hamstring problem. He did come on in the latter stages of the game at Lazio, a handful of minutes for him. But he has become indispensable for Spalletti, where previously he was a big part player under his predecessor, Rino Gattuso. Koulibaly, that's a lovely ball for Mario Rui, but he can't quite climb high enough. Yeah, but Insigne movements force Calabria to follow him inside the park, and then Koulibaly tried to, to find Mario Rui there. Yes, but Ozyman is doing such an hard work there. He's always forcing two defenders at least to stay with him. So you cannot leave him one against one because he's got, as we said, strength and pace. And you want someone to help you, especially covering your position. Victor Seaman has scored plenty of goals for Napoli since he became their record signing, but he hasn't really made his mark on any of the big matches against teams like Juventus, Napoli, or rather Milan and Inter. Sooner or later, he might have to do that if Napoli are to go on and win the Scudetto. Lobotkin. He's seen yet. Fabian Ruiz, Tielinski, Fabian once more. Mario Rui. Insigne trying to square up Calabria. This is Fabian Ruiz. Never in a rush, scarcely in a hurry. Politano. Di Lorenzo. He had no need to go down there with Tamori at his back, but Daniele Orsato once again letting play go. Kessier, Teo Hernandez, that's going to be a yellow card now for Rachmani, and Napoli have both centre-backs booked. Yeah, but that was... Rachmani had to do this kind of fall because uh, Teo Hernandez was on his bike, played play the one-two with Kessier there. Insigne saying, yes, this was a foul, but prior to that, there was a foul on Di Lorenzo. But instead, it's Rachmani who's had his name taken. Napoli do have previous with Daniele Orsato, albeit indirectly. He was the referee for Inter 2, Juventus 3, when Spalletti was coach, incidentally, a game where Inter felt that Miralem Pjanic should have been sent off when Matthias Vecino was. There was a late goal from former Napoli player Gonzalo Higuain, which gave Juventus the win that night late on at San Siro. The following day, Koulibaly was sent off early in Florence. Giovanni Simeone scored a hat-trick, and that was dubbed the Scudetto that Napoli lost in the hotel room. Osato, the referee, not for Napoli's match, but for the game between Inter and Juventus. And in this city, they've never forgotten that. Clip forward by Mignon. Tomori given away to Fabian Ruiz, but here is Teo Hernandez. Milan pouring forward again. Benacer just lost momentum. Now Napoli have got numbers back. Kessier immediately looks for Rafael Leal. The pace to get away from Di Lorenzo. Well played, Rahmani. Politano. It's never going to catch that. Benacer seeking out the head of Giroud, who went clattering in there to Ospina. And it might be a yellow card for the Frenchman here because he was very late on the goalkeeper. Not sure, but if he's seeing the goalkeeper coming out, Brave is a big boy, he knows it. He was looking for the ball. Who's been, I think, with another one. Ospina 
frequently goes down getting treatment. You almost see it on a weekly basis. He is not the tallest goalkeeper, but he is courageous, as Manuel said. Giroud had every right to attack the ball, but once the goalkeeper got there and he was clattered by Giroud, it was always likely to be a caution. In fact, the Milan number nine is the first Rossoneri player to be booked tonight. Yes, he, he, he's brave. I think Koulibaly, there, he won't be happy you know, with Koulibaly because when you call the ball, you're expecting your defender to try to shield your goalie there. But he's, he's very brave, he's always there, seeing the, the, the danger. Because again, Giroud was peeling on the back of uh, Koulibaly's shoulder. They do have two very accomplished goalkeepers Napoli, Alex Meret, the backup is Italy's third choice goalkeeper who went to Euro 2020 along with Ciccio Donnarumma and Salvatore Sirigu. Got a spinner able to continue. Fabian Ruiz. Now Koulibaly, but Milan surely need to drive at the two Napoli centre backs given they've both been booked. Or Seaman this time couldn't latch onto the ball from Koulibaly, but he appreciated the idea. Route one from Mignon, looking for Rafael Liao. Can he get away from Di Lorenzo? No, is the answer. The ball just defended by Di Lorenzo, but what about Mignon kick? Incredible. You cannot switch off for a second, especially if the big goal has got the ball in his feet. Can find Liao, as they did a couple of times this season. Most recently in the game against Sampdoria, when Liao scored the winner. It's given away by Insigne, of all people. Ben Asser, he's been bright and breezy. Teo Hernandez. It's reached Ben Asser, Napoli chasing back again. Teo Hernandez. Giroud keeping possession. Just under five minutes to play until the break. It is a tight match, as you would expect, given how much is at stake. Junior Messias shown inside. Calabria. Christian. Benasser. Tonali. Now it's Milan's turn to wait for their moment, not trying to force things. A draw in the grand scheme of things wouldn't be a bad result, it would leave them both level with Inter, but it would allow Juventus to keep believing and keep dreaming of forcing their way back into the reckoning. Yes, because Napoli are leaving Ozzy men playing against the two centre-backs, facing down two centre-backs, and if they don't have any pressure, they can move the ball using Tonali every time. Osimen battling once again. Calabria came away with the ball. Junior Messias. The ball has stayed in play. That's a good challenge from Kalulu. Calabria. Rahmani there to tidy up. He's done well to keep that ball in from Ospina. Giroud claiming the last touches off the Portuguese fullback. It is an Napoli throw, however. Because they see Milan under pressure. When they press high Napoli, they play or Benacer or Kessier or the other centre back. So they go man by man and they cannot play easily. Poked forward by Zielinski or Seaman. Holding off Kalulu, he was impeded. Victor Osimhen with 11 goals in all competitions this season. It's only an 18th start for the second year running in Napoli colours. It has been a campaign frustrated by injuries. He's still wearing that face mask. 
since recovering from the fractured cheekbone he sustained in the first game against Inter. And then it's only 1 3 2. Napoli with more of the ball, but nothing to show for it. Lobotka. Insigne around the corner. Osimen leaves it for Fabian Ruiz. I'm not quite sure who he's looking for there. Zielinski is a lot of things, but not necessarily the quickest player on the park. Benasir. He thought he was caught by Politano. Milan keep possession. Just for a moment, it looked like Napoli had an overload there, but they couldn't exploit it. Flicked on by Rafael Liao. Koulibaly there ahead of Giroud. It's bad because we said it so many times, Napoli's got so three midfielders that loves their fantastic technically. They love to play the ball in their feet, but maybe they're missing someone that runs behind the defenders, especially when Ozyman is coming out that line. Then I say, as we move towards the 45-minute mark, Rafael Liao, Junior Messias, Calabria, it's too deep for Giroud. Politano will safely watch it into touch. How much added time? Four minutes to account, particularly for that injury to David Ospina. But we also saw Giroud down, having his ankle strapped. So still plenty of time to see an opening goal here before the interval. Di Lorenzo has done well to keep Tonali at bay. Tonali dived in in the end. He's saying it was shoulder to shoulder. Free kick Napoli. Yeah, Di Lorenzo has been outstanding for, for Napoli and the Italian national team in this position. He's a bit underrated because every time he can even score goals, but he's got great physical attributes. Amazingly, Di Lorenzo, despite almost picking up concussion in uh, Sardinia recently, has not cumulatively missed an entire match. 73 minutes in all competitions all season. He was taken off for a, co a token quarter of an hour here in the win over Salemitana. And then at Cagliari after that injury, Fabian Ruiz. Mario Rui. Fabian Ruiz couldn't quite take it. Kessier had tracked him. But just for a moment, that was an opportunity for Napoli. Yeah, because there was a four-man press. AC Milan press at all the back four. Napoli, but they moved the ball so well and found Fabian Ruiz who played one two situation with Mario Rui almost in front of the goalie. Tomori glides away from Zielinski, Giroud's touch for Rafael Liao, and now Benasser with Junior Messias ahead of him. Junior Messias tried to find either Rafael Liao or Giroud, the pass wasn't good enough. Calabria nearly lost it to Fabian Ruiz. We played half of the four added minutes at the end of this first period. Rafael Liao lost his footing. Tielinski for Osimen. Trying to beat Kalulu for pace, and there was Tamori backing him up. Centre backs, players pairs, don't they, Manuel? Yes. Do you, need, you see, they need two defenders against Osimen, so means there is an extra man somewhere free, and Napoli has to find him. Because Ozzy, man, every time you play the ball and he's got room to play, he's unstoppable. An arm on the shoulder there from Rafael Liao, that's why Zielinski was sent tumbling. Napoli have time now to send some quality into the box. Not a challenge he necessarily needed to make there, Zielinski was going away from goal. trying to organize Napoli scored in the fourth added minute at the end of the game at Lazio can they do it at the end of the half here Politano with the set piece and it is wasteful yeah, because that, that was a chance you bring in the box the two big center backs then you've got those men obviously Politano he's been disappointed as Paletti too because we said it so many times on this that ball situation, you can score, you can, you can win big matches.
Kessier with the flick on. Rafael Liao, he's inadvertently given it to Fabian Ruiz. It's Signier had more time than he realised. He was keen to find Zielinski. And that surely means we'll be going in with the scoreline goalless at the break. Still a very fascinating match between these two teams. Lobotka, Fabian Ruiz between the lines. Here's Insigne, and now Zielinski. He fouled neither Osimhen nor Insigne. And Daniele Orsato says after 49 minutes, that will do for the first half. It's a case of what might have been. Spalletti unhappy with some decision-making. Milan went close with a header from Junior Messias, but the whistle went. Neither goalkeeper has had a great deal to do. It's as you were at half-time. Napoli nil, Milan nil. What is it? It is passion and style, heritage and diversity, creativity and innovation. Italy is simply extraordinary, be it.
huge respect between these two sides. Willy Bali with a high five there for Milan head coach Stefano Pioli, shared a joke as well with his opposite number tonight, wearing the Milan armband, Davide Calabria stepping in as skipper in the absence of Alessio Romagnoli through injury. But both of Napoli's centre-backs were booked in the first half, Koulibaly and Rahmani. Koulibaly for fairly late challenge on Giroud, who has a gash on his ankle. Giroud, though, then left one in on Ospina, picked up a caution of his own. We have had just one effort on target. Rafael Liao from distance had a shot comfortably saved by Ospina. Ospina made a brilliant stop to keep out Junior Messias from a corner, but the whistle had already gone for a foul on Mario Rui. And Napoli, despite some pretty touches in the middle of the park, haven't yet been able to really test this Rossoneri backline. So as things stand, the two sides that are smiling tonight, Inter at the top, still with that game in hand, they would be level on points were this scoreline to hold, and Juventus now suddenly to within five points of both Milan and Napoli. Is there to be a goal in this second half, Manuel? And if so, which way do you see it going? We hope so. In my opinion, AC Milan has to involve more either Rafael Leao and Teo Hernandez. They can't exploit the fact that two of the centre-backs are booked, so they cannot be as aggressive as they love to be. On the other side, Napoli has to bring more players close to Ozyman, because uh, he's been left alone too many times against the AC Milan two centre-backs, and uh, this is a, a job that Elmas did so well against Roma the previous week. Clip forward by Tomori, brought down by Giroud. Insigne is still the Napoli captain, despite what I said about Koulibaly when he was walking out alongside Calabria. Koulibaly, the vice-captain, like Calabria, is for Milan. But the man they call Kuli might well be the next Napoli skipper as and when Insigne leaves for Major League Soccer. Rafael Liao impeded by Politano. It's a Milan free kick. Yes, when Rafael Liao received the ball and drive towards the opponents, it can be unstoppable. That's something that AC Milan has to use more, especially in that change, left chain with Teo Hernandez. Milan have struggled in recent times to get the better of uh, Napoli. Just one win since 2015 in 14 league meetings, but Ibrahimovic got a brace when they did win here in uh, November 2020. Jens Peter Hauger scored a rare goal too in Rossoneri colours in his brief spell with the club, and Junior Messias has won an early corner hit. And again, he's a mid swinger like the Tonali. The first half when Isimian had the chance with the Messias. Daniele Orsato just having a word with Teo Hernandez, who was potentially impeding the Napoli goalkeeper, David Ospina. <laughs> Junior Messias with the corner, headed away by Fabian Ruiz. Benacer. Junior Messias again, back onto his stronger side. Oh, Seaman heads it away. Delicately done by Insigne, and then Mario Rui just clears it hopefully long. It's the importance to have a centre forward that is very good in the air, in both boxes. As a manager, he loves to have that kind of players, especially in the front post area. Benacer. Well found by Mignon, whose kicking is impeccable. It's been a great first season at the club for Mike Mignon. Ten clean sheets. This is his 28th appearance in all competitions. Benacer, who's arguably been Milan's best player so far. He looks for Rafael Liao. Away by Rahmani. Teo Hernandez, first to the loose ball. Koulibaly steps in. Insigne, that's Tonali, and now it's Teo Hernandez on this unfamiliar near side. He was just caught by Insigne, Milan have a free kick. Yeah, but telling you, he's, he's an intelligent fall because Koulibaly was in an attacking position and uh, Rahmani was left by himself in the centre 
of the defense. Clearly a fool, even if he is not, doesn't agree with the referee. There's two straight draws in the league. In fact, it's three in all competitions have been met with some negativity, but Milan still very much in the title race, very much in the Coppa Italia too. Tonali with the free kick. It drops for front kiss here, and Calabria now turned in by Giroud. What a brilliant striker's instinct there to give Milan the lead. He'd had to wait a while for his first goal away from San Siro, but he sure picked the right venue. Four minutes into the second half, and Milan lead in Naples. That's the perfect number nine goal. When he's in the box, he's level. And he showed against Inter in a kind of similar situation. Look here. Tonali, not the best there, the ball is staying there, offside position, maybe Giroud, we're going to check it, but he's always placed there, always first to react. And uses his, even his body to push a bit away, Koulibaly. 1-0 AC Milan. Brilliant finish from Olivier Giroud, the awareness to get back on side. And then the skill just to divert that. It wasn't an easy finish. Just the right amount of purchase on the ball to send it past Ospina and into the corner. And Olivier Giroud is rapidly becoming the main man in the title race for Milan. A match-winning brace in the derby. Now he has the opening goal at Napoli. A lot had been made about the fact all of his goals had come at San Siro. That's no longer the case. Insigne. Mario Rui. Fabiano. taking a big blow to the ankle on that left foot in the first half. It didn't show there. Yes, but he was so clever. Now Rafael Leao. Rafael Leao moving through the gears. Rafael Leao is deflected. And that made it easy for Ospina. And good blocks by Rachmani. But on the goal he was clever because he was just behind, peeling away from his defender, behind Koulibaly's shoulders, who lost him. And he was clever to push the Seneca centre-back a bit. And what a finish, he's let in the, in the box. He's one of the best strikers, you cannot argue with that. Well in by Teo Hernandez, Giroud's last five goals incidentally. A brace against Inter in the league, a brace against Lazio in the cup, and now the opener here at Napoli scoring against the big boys, finding the net against the other members of the Seven Sisters, and above all, against the other two teams that Milan are battling for the title with. We said part of the importance of set pieces in this kind of matches where an episode can make the difference. And that's what happened just a couple of minutes before. Benasser, well found by Calabria. This is Teo Hernandez. Benasser. Tonali. Kessier. Tonali again. Milan now playing with confidence, but it was a foul by Kessier on Rahmani. Calabria, I'm not sure will necessarily get the assist for that goal from Giroud. It was certainly a shot, but it's the same combination, incidentally, as Giroud's winning goal at San Siro against Inter. That was Calabria into his feet as he turned away from De Vrij. Smashed it past Andanovic this time around. It 
was just an instinctive finish as he stuck out a leg. Well won by Kalulu. Benasir. There are contrasting motivations for the three teams in the title race. Inter looking for their 20th league title, which would earn them a second star. Milan are determined to move level on 19 Scudetti with Inter and stop their rivals from getting to that 20 mark. And Napoli have waited 32 years to be Italian champions again. Rafael Liao. There's the pace. Rafael Liao trying to roll it into the path of Messias. But this has been quite the start to the second half from Milan. And they currently sit top of the pile as things stand. Because Napoli has to be calm because if you stretch, AC Milan's got weapons up front. Messias, pace, Leao pace that can hurt you if they got stretched. Good ball from Kessier. This is Ben Asir. Junior Messias in the channel. Benasser instead for Kessier. Benasser again, half a yard to curl it. Pushed away by Ospina, it's a good stop. Yeah, good stop because Teo Hernandez was there, ready to hit it home there. Look, great save because the ball was even bouncing in front of him. But now Napoli is in danger. You see there for inches is onside. You can see his right arm on Koulibaly's shoulder. He's one of the most underrated players of his generation, Olivier Giroud. More on that in a moment. He will be attacking this corner. And it comes from Teo Hernandez. Giroud attacks it! And Tamori's header is dealt with by Ospina. Napoli in a hurry to get forward with Politano. What a kick from Ospina, what a piece of control from Matteo Politano. He's found a cross too, but no one was up with him. Yeah, good effort, great kick by Ospina again. And Politano, great first touch, went away from Tonali, but nobody was in the box, just Ozzy men. Olivier Giroud has won the Champions League, he's won the Europa League, he's won the World Cup the as World well. Cup. The champion with Montpellier in France. Yes, but he's the kind of striker if you see if he plays 40 yards from goals, yeah, maybe you can criticize him, but if the ball is just going somewhere in the box, he's there. So far, Seaman has been kept quiet by the Kalulu Tomori axis at the back for Milan. Nice layoff by Giroud, Benasser. Junior Messias, his was the last touch. That's what we were saying, Ozzy man, if you, if you leave him playing against two centre-backs, it's quite easy, because one, is, he go, one goes aggressive, the other one covers the other centre-backs. You need someone close to him, closer to him, because you see Zelisk in this kind of position, Lobotka as well, Fabian Ruiz, they love to play the ball in their feet in Signe Politano. But you need some runs from behind that can help this Ozyman movement. They have the likes of Eli Felmas on the bench. He came on and made such an impact at Lazio. Lozano is finally available again after a dislocated shoulder. And Adam Unas, who played a big part in Fabian Ruiz's winner, something that Spalletti described in his press conference yesterday. He said the way he ducked inside was something we don't see enough of from Unas. So Napoli do have attacking options. It's just how and when they use them. But that is a question for Spalletti, who will turn 63 tomorrow. He won't want to lose on the eve of that special day. For once, Benyon's clearance not the best, and for once, Di Lorenzo's touch was loose. Here come Milan with Kessier. Teo Hernandez, let it run for Rafael Liao. The referee was in the way, but Milan keep the ball. Junior Messias. This is Ben Asir, allowed to turn. That's obstruction, and it's a Napoli free kick. I think he could have played a one two with the Messias, who was ready to receive the ball and try to hit it. First touch here. Ben Asir opted to keep the ball. 
He took a chance there, Mario Rui, with that challenge because Benazir shielded the ball just as the fullback came crashing in. Napoli need to keep cool heads. Even if they were to lose tonight, their title challenge would not be compromised. That's true for both sides. But as we know, momentum all important. Napoli had plenty of that. Wind in their sails after the Fabian Ruiz winner at Lazio. But now it's Milan who have a spring in their step, as shown there by Teo Hernandez. It's AC Milan two or three times find Rafael Leao and even Messias. Zielinski. Mario Rui dispossessed by Junior Messias. The pass wasn't quite up to scratch from Zielinski, and that's what Mario Rui is saying. Great effort by Messias. I was saying, Napoli are not allowed to find Insigne in his natural position there with his feet on the line by line and the other side of Politano as well they, they didn't receive the ball quite often to be able to go one against one still half an hour remaining Napoli trail to that Olivier Giroud opening goal early on in the second half Giroud soldiering on after a heavy blow to his ankle in the first half. Ibrahimovic clearly doesn't have much beyond a token appearance on the bench. Lobotka. Mario Rui. Lobotka again. Fabian Ruiz. Looking for options ahead of him. Insigne is one. Here's Fabian again. Not quite sure whether he's looking for Di Lorenzo or for Politano. Here's Rafael Liao. Milan could yet be deadly in transition. Rafael Liao initially lost it and then kept it, and now he ducks away from Fabian Ruiz. Teo Hernandez takes over. Still Teo Hernandez. Easy for Koulibaly. And Politano's kept it in play. Frenetic tempo to this match. Politano. He thought he was held back. Advantage played by Daniele Orsato. Wonderful control from Insigne. Mario Rui, Koulibaly's continued his run. Koulibaly, or Seaman caught on his heels and Koulibaly unhappy. And now here come Milan, Junior Messias. Pioli's told them to calm down, which is why Rafael Liao completely slows the tempo. Yes, because it's the third time that the game is going side, 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 side. So they have to keep the ball and go horizontally, side to side. Given away again by Mignon, perhaps just a shine of the pressure that could be creeping in. Less assured with his feet than he usually is. Insigne. Fabian Ruiz spotted Di Lorenzo. Di Lorenzo might yet get there. Tomori's taken a chance, he's done very well. Advantage played again because there was a foul by Di Lorenzo. That's a great defending by Tomori. Because, yes, it's a good ball here. Rafael Leao, great tackle there. But then Di Lorenzo was coming with full speed and Tomori used his body in a beautiful way. We have been treated all season long in Serie A in these big matches. Very rarely have they been dull affairs and tonight is no exception. Once again, pure entertainment, Politano. Showed too much to Teo Hernandez, the ball won't run though. And eventually, Teo Hernandez had to clear it off Politano and behind for a goal kick. Wonderful defense. He's a player that we know that going forward is unstoppable, boy. He's improving so much. Here the goal. Look, it's, it's not easy at all, but he's expecting this to happen. He knows that this can happen. He's, in his, he's on his toes and scored for AC Milan a crucial goal at the moment. Brilliant from Giroud, not only to get back on side, but as you said, Manuel. He was on his toes on the half turn, had the perfect body position just to divert the ball goalwards, and nothing Ospina could do. Stefano Pioli and the Milan senior management have certainly got recruitment right. Credit to Paolo Maldini, the technical director, and Ricky Massara, the sporting director. Their transfer policy at times has been frustrating for fans because they do have a budget, they do tend to earmark young players with high potential but Pioli has found the perfect blend of youth and experience and 
striker yet inspire them to a first Scudetto since 2011. As things stand, they are the front runners because Inter's game in hand is nothing more than that, an asterisk for the moment. The Bocker has found Insigne. Mario Rui on the overlap. Mario Rui's cross. Cleared away by Kalulu. Benasser tried to be too cute. Lobotka. Mario Rui. Insigne. Koulibaly. Gets it back from Zielinski. Could spell this for Napoli. Zielinski between the lines. Mario Rui. all 11 players behind the ball. Insigne's flick doesn't come off, that's Junior Messias. Not quite sure who he spotted there. Rafael Liao, the only player with the pace to be able to get onto that. Yes, they are under pressure. That ball for Messias was just to brief a bit. Because Napoli now are trying everything to reach the equaliser. We are going to see Adam Unas and Eli Felmas, two players that made such a splash in the capital. Fabian Ruiz allowed to turn. Advantage played because he was pulled back by Kessier. Insigne looking for Fabian Ruiz. It's on by Osimen. Calmly done by Kessier. Brilliant work. What do Milan decide to do now? Benasser, let's just keep ball. A wise decision, they have the lead. Junior Messias stepping away from Mario Rui. Giroud makes the run, he can return the favour. Junior Messias was in, but for some brilliant defending from Amir Ahmani. Here come Napoli again, Mario Rui. Osimen, Zielinski. Di Lorenzo forward from fullback. The crowd anxious, Fabian Ruiz, Mario Rui, Fabian again. Insigne can deliver, it's his cross, Politano around the back, but Maignan able to grab it. Well, well Maignan, that what you need, big presence in the box. See, I think Giroud had a nasty twist, we're gonna check it. Napoli can now make their changes, but yeah, clearly Teo Hernandez putting the ball out because Giroud can go on no longer, but he has more than played his part tonight. Here's how he sustained the injury with that back heel and then just seemed to lose his balance. And this time he's holding the right angle, having already, the right angle, ankle I should say, having already sustained it, a knock to the other. And now it will either be Rebic or Ibrahimovic for Milan. They're going to have to make a change. Insigne has not made the same contribution that he did away at Lazio. Politano also comes off, so both wide men have been withdrawn. Yes, winger, four winger, but they've got both Elmas and Unas. The quality and the pace to go one against one. I think. Giroud twisted awkwardly his ankle. Krinic on for Tonali, meanwhile, as Milan make a change, and it is Rebic who's sent on at centre forward, so that shows that Ibrahimovic presumably is not fit enough to feature tonight. We won't see him until the Empoli home game next Saturday. Ibrahimovic now saying to Giroud, What have you done? What's the prognosis? How long are we talking? Because these are all important factors when it comes to Milan's title chase. Ten games remaining. There is huge respect between the pairs. Giroud said early on in his time at Milan that he could learn a lot from Ibrahimovic. I would suggest that Ibra could learn a thing or two from Giroud as well. Still a quarter of the game remaining. Milan in the ascendancy. They have the lead. It is a precious advantage. Di Lorenzo, well closed down by Rafael Liao. Obviously now with the Rebic, you don't have the physical presence you had with the Giroud, but he's another one that can drive the ball with pace, he can attack behind the two Napoli centre-back. Tris Mertens was an unused substitute in that game against 
Lazio. That was the first time since September that he hadn't featured at all when available for selection. There's a reason why he's Napoli's all-time leading goal scorer. Well in by Osim, and that's brilliant. Kalulu quick to apologise to his teammates. You need this kind of spirit in your team. He's showing his teammates that they need more. More is aggressive, passion. You need passion now. A big character to step up. Rally Krinic got away with one there. Milan will be aware of the fact that Napoli have scored in every home league match here since that shock defeat by a goal to nil to Spezia in their final game of 2021 when there was that bizarre own goal from Juan Jesus. It has been their form on this ground that has cost Napoli this season. Three of their four defeats have come in Fuori Grotta, Atalanta, Empoli and Spezia. Are Milan going to become the latest side to come to Naples and win? Lobotka. Unas. Zielinski. He can hit them from there. Instead, it's Fabian Ruiz. He can certainly strike them. Great ball for Mario Rui. He was stretching. Misjudged by Fabian Ruiz. Well won by Rebic. Krunic was hauled to the ground. It is a Milan free kick. It was clever by Mario Rui, by the way, because the ball was not perfect on this kind of surface. They've gone on a goal kick situation. So he's sliding, he's raining a bit as well. Napoli's task gets slightly easier next weekend, but not by much. They go away to the Bentegodi. The two fan bases can't stand each other. The Giallo Blu of Verona and the Azzurri of Napoli. Milan at home to Empoli, but they have occasionally struggled in home matches that on paper they should win. Most recently, Udinese. They lost at San Siro against Spezia. They tend to turn up in the big matches, however. Di Lorenzo looking for Osimen. He's isolated Kalulu. Victor Osimen for Elmas to strike. Goal kick is the decision. Great job by Osimen again. Who's every time playing against two players. Set up this for Elmas. But good recovery run by Kronich. So Elmas had to rush it. Kessier with the flick on, Rafael Liao with the close control. And then he was fouled by Di Lorenzo. This is perfect for Milan, just what they want. Chance to break up the play, get the ball in that area of the pitch and frustrate Napoli. Yes, low. the tempo, it's what you need. Couple of fouls won by the strikers so the defence can breathe. There is a large proliferation of scarves this evening. The Napoli diehard fans made an appeal to all those turning up, the 40,000 strong crowd inside the Maradona to wear their scarves and make themselves heard. They've done their bit, the players have not held up their end of the bargain thus far. Cleared long by Mignon, well watched by Rahmani, but this is Kessier. Rebic. Rafael Liao, Ante Rebic, Krunic for Kessier. Lovely football from Milan, they win a corner. Yeah, it's a difference when you've got Rebic because he loves to receive the ball into those pockets and play short, short football. Krunic, great lane for a good Kessier run. Milan not only have the lead, they're also pressing forward in search of a second. Given how few opportunities Napoli have had, that might well be fatal for the Azzurri's hopes of getting a result tonight. Teo Hernandez with the outswinger, away by Osimen. Krunic. Tomori has ended up clattering the head of Osimen, who, to his credit, got straight up and ran forward. And again, on the front post area, headed away the corner, and now is the first one to react. This ball played by Krunic. Yes. 
stony-faced. Aurelio De Laurentiis, the Napoli president. He has done a lot since taking over this club. Got them back to winning silverware. Coppa Italia on three occasions. Also made some inspired appointments. Maurizio Sarri, chief amongst them. Yet the Scudetto has eluded them. And it continues to do so. Rachmani, route one for Elmas. Now Osimen trying to link up again with Elif Elmas. Calabria. Rebic beaten to it by Rachmani. Koulibaly, Lobotka. Elmas. Pioli trying to get a message across to Ante Rebic about how to defend. Unas for Osimen. Well played, Pierre Kalulu. He's had a great game. This is a brilliant defense. Defense display because as a centre back, sometimes you got lazy, so you don't follow the run behind the, your teammate. Great defense again by Kalulu. Plenty of blue shirts wait in the box now. Unas some corner duties. Unas with the delivery. Mignon elected to punch. It wasn't the best. Elmas first to the loose ball. Trying to watch it behind. He's done a really good job. It is another corner. There's another corner. We will see. Mario Rui will take it and outswing it. We see if he's going to play short or go in the box. Fabian Ruiz makes way. Here comes Tris Mertens. Spalletti has to roll the dice, has to take a chance. And he's done exactly that. So, presumably, Mertens playing at number 10 now, Manuel. Yes, and Zelinski will go into Fabian Ruiz's position. 15 minutes. Mertens will be desperate to score. Nicolais. He's immediately gone across to take the set piece. Mertens with the corner. It's towards Di Lorenzo. Away by Teo Hernandez. Told to get to his feet by the referee. Unas skips away from Rebic. Still Adam. Unas! Narrowly off target. And now they're afters between Osiman and Teo Hernandez. It's kicking off in Naples. We'll see what happened there, because all the players rushed in. Osimhen is not happy with their reaction. There, are standing, having a conversation there. But great play by Unas, went into his left foot. Teo Hernandez needs to be careful because he's a booking away from suspension. And Teo Hernandez will now miss the Empoli game. He is a brilliant fullback. He's a wonderful talent. But Milan will miss him next week. And that might mean we'll see Calabria and Florenzi both playing in the same game. But confirmation that Milan will be without their brilliant left back for the game against Empoli. Unas keeping his international teammate at bay. Adam Unas looking inspired here. But Mignon able to gather the loose ball. He looks lively. He wants to, he wants to take some responsibility. He's very good one against one, and now Teo Hernandez says to be careful because he's already been booked. And this boy will go and will take him on. Cleared away by Di Lorenzo, but into touch, and that favours Milan, who are just a dozen minutes away from the finish line. As things stand, they are going clear at the top by two points ahead of Inter. They will also move three ahead of Napoli. If this scoreline holds into it, it will be the exact same head-to-head -head record between the two sides. So Napoli would have the edge on goal difference. Mertens has picked the pocket of Teo Hernandez and Tamori came across to dispossess Osimhen. Napoli fired up, we know they can score late goals, we saw it last week, and they could yet throw on Andrea Petania if they really want to go route one. Zielinski. Koulibaly has taken the armband since Insigne was substituted off. 
Koulibaly. Elmas. Mertens. Well in by Isma Benasser. But then he's turned into trouble. That looked like shoulder to shoulder. Mertens penalised and he's unhappy. Yeah, he got a bit nervous because he, he lost this ball. But Benasser always hungry to, to steal the ball away from an opponent. That's the owner's chance. A curly effort there. Not far away. Mignon had it covered. You could see there wasn't enough bend on it. And here comes Alessandro Florenzi, who played under Luciano Spalletti. So too, Alexis Salamakas is on. Junior Messias and Davide Calabria. The men who will make way. Messias has already gone off, and now Davide Calabria hands over the armband to Franck Kessier, which shows the esteem that he's still held in by Stefano Pioli. His future is in doubt. There is talk of him leaving on a free transfer, yet when there is no Romagnoli and no Calabria, Kessier, the man chosen to wear the armband. And we saw a two fingers up there from Ibrahimovic, presumably saying it was a double change, Manuel, as opposed to saying how many minutes he wants to play tonight. <laughs> we don't know, but yeah, we do maybe a couple of changes, or maybe say 20 minutes are left, maybe knowing that just 10. Sometimes these are mental games to, to help your teammates. That looked like handball by Rafael Liao, that's certainly the way the referee saw things. Milan have made four changes now. Krunic and Rebic, Florenzi and Salamakas. We're about to see Edwin Lozano, who has been out for a long while and is arguably a unique player for Napoli in terms of his skill set. Seven matches on the sidelines with that dislocated shoulder that he sustained with Mexico at the end of January on international duty. Elmas, surrounded by red and black shirts. Krunic. He was tripped by Elmas. Milan have done a really good job of frustrating Napoli. Now Mario Rui's gone firing in. In fact, I think it was handball against Radek Krunic. It's a Napoli free kick, and now Lozano can be sent on. Yeah, we see if Ozzy Men will come off. No, look, Lobotka. Not precise, well, he's coming on. Zombongisa, another player who has been missing. Three matches out with a hamstring problem. Zielinski quiet tonight. We see how he's gonna play. We see Elmas will play center mid with Anguissa. Here is Zombongisa trying to get away from Kessier. Two players that featured at the Africa Cup of Nations, and Ibrahimovic presumably has enough to come on and try and guide Milan across the line. Unas, Mertens, Zombongisa. Di Lorenzo, Unas is onside here. Put behind by Kessier, it is a corner. Milan want the flag, but it doesn't come. Yeah, was it offside? Could I think one of the two centre-back? Napoli have taken the corner quickly. Mertens, Unas, not a good ball, not a good clearance either from Rafael Liao. This is Lozano, and Mignon knew where his post was. He watched it wide. It was an offside, then Napoli took the corner quickly. I think a bit, uh, Pioli could be worried about now Napoli's size in the set pieces situation because they've got Anguissa as well now. Maybe they're going to bring Petania on, so you need the centimeters. A yellow card for Mike Mignon for time wasting. What a hugely pivotal moment this could be in the context of Milan's season and Napoli's campaign too. Locked on 57 points at the start of play. Milan are heading for the summit. Salamakas riding the challenge. Not once but twice, even three times. Rebic, he looked for Salamakas. Koulibaly for Elmas. This is Mario Rui. Osimen. Lozano, lovely football. Mertens. Zombogisa. Once again, Napoli looking for Unas to make something happen. That's a good ball. Mertens, 
Di Lorenzo, it was on his weaker left side and he couldn't readjust. He has wonderful football. I think Di Lorenzo was expected to receive that ball on his right foot and place it one touch in the box. Teo Hernandez, round the corner by Rebic, it's a lovely ball. Rafael Liao now, Salamakas makes his way into the box. Koulibaly comes away with it. Still Koulibaly. Lozano, fouled by Florenzi. Play continues because Koulibaly has it. Expect Florenzi to be booked when play stops. Edwin Lozano. Zombogisa. Unas. Zombogisa, Unas had shown for it and then checked short. He has bad choice by Angus. I think Lozano was going to make that movement just to create that room for Di Lorenzo to come here before you were talking about receive Florenzi with we caution. He appears to have got away with it, Alessandro Florenzi, perhaps due to the fact he's only just come on, not quite up to the pace of play and afforded a reprieve by Daniele Orsato. We're into the final five minutes in Fuori Grotta. Juan Barahmani, Kessier, shoulder to shoulder with Zombo Gisa. It's the Napoli man who comes away with it. Unas releasing Victor Osimhen. The angle is tight and Mignon makes the save. Still there for Zombo Gisa. Can he tee up a teammate? Unas. Zombongisa, the cross was well shut down by Kessier, but Mignon just about got something on it. Yes, because it was a great run by Osimhen. Again, he got energy to go there. Mignon covered the front post area well. Make sure no goals conceded. Five minutes to go. Flawless technique from Mignon. He makes goalkeeping look effortless at times. Zombongisa has lost it. Krunic. Rebic, Teo Hernandez streaming through the middle, he's been well found. Teo Hernandez! Good save from Ospina. One you'd expect him to make at his near post, but it was ferociously struck. Di Lorenzo. Unas, lots of time and space for Elmas. Lozano now. Lozano from distance, that is ambitious. Yes, especially because he had a couple of options. A great run by Teo Hernandez with five minutes to go. 80 meters run, a great shot on the front post area. So powerful, but Ospina did very, very well. But when he's got room to run, like this man, they are so good, so great to watch. <laughs> Even a quick path for him. Some standing water on the running track around the Maradona. There has been some rain in recent days. Salamakas went through Mario Rui there. That's why it is an Apley free kick. Time is running out, but they will surely draw on the experience of seven days ago. It was around this time of night when Fabian Ruiz produced one moment of pure quality. Zlatan Ibrahimovic is set to make his long-awaited return for Milan. After half a dozen matches on the sidelines. He's probably will take Leao off because he, he looks exhausted. Mario Rui. Rebic can pull wide. Sorry, Manuel, I uh, cut you off there. Elmas. Ibrahimovic has to wait for the moment. The ball's still in play. Unas. That's a lovely ball. Di Lorenzo can cut it back. What a challenge from Vicayo Tamori. Kessier with the strength. But Napoli have surrounded him. Mertens. Strong finish this from the home side. Koulibaly slightly miscued for Rahmani. Ibrahimovic have to stay. Has to, have to stay warm so the on the sidelines. Koulibaly towards Osimhen, good hands again from Mignon. Yes, lovely by Mignon, but we're going to show again 
Ozyman did the wrong movements in my opinion there because Mertens was ready to receive the cutback so he needs to attack the goal because Di Lorenzo saw had two options instead of the other way he had just one option to play that cut pass where Mertens and Ozyman was waiting for the same ball here comes Zlatan Ibrahimovic you called it Manuel it is Rafael Liao who makes his way off Another full-blooded performance from him, stretching the Napoli back line throughout. And he takes his time coming off and salutes the pocket of travelling supporters. Zlatan Ibrahimovic will not only hold the ball up, but he'll also try and get in Napoli's face. And as you said, he can offer a helping hand defending set pieces and high balls. Yeah, now AC Milan will try to play every single ball into Ibra. He has to keep it as long as he can. Forward by Florenzi, Ibrahimovic's first touch is to hold off Koulibaly. Kessier, Salamakas, first to the loose ball. And this is Radek Krunic. It nearly ran there for Salamakas. Goal kick is the decision. Yes, Kunic didn't find any solution there, so he went by himself. But then he played the ball into Salamakas and fall on Mario Rui. We are into added time. Napoli need an equaliser. They have five minutes to try and come up with it. Milan five minutes away from a huge result, from a massive win. One that could be a game-changer in their title challenge. Koulibaly, he can't find Osimen. Tomori, it's given away to Mertens. Elmas. Unas. Elmas asking someone to show for the ball. Tombo Giza. Mario Rui. Napoli taking their time, waiting before, just hopefully tossing the ball into the box. Elmas. Rachmani. Mertens away from Benasser. Still Mertens. And still Dries Mertens, what a run! What a challenge from Teo Hernandez. Now Rebic with the pace, away from Unas. That'll be a yellow card for pulling his shirt. That's a fabulous tackle by Teo Hernandez, because was basically the last man standing there he took a gamble there he went all in and saved Mertens to drive past him towards Magnon great defensive display Matteo a clear cynical tug there from Adam Unas Napoli becoming increasingly frustrated Milan have been better in the more significant areas of the pitch Ante Rebic now this to kill it off, Rebic, he looked for Ibrahimovic, it was a nice idea. Unas, calm switch of play, Mario Rui, dispossessed by Salamakas. Milan get the throw and two of the five minutes have been and gone. Yes, and breathing now, bad touch by Mario Rui, but great pressure by Salamakas. Every time this player plays, always give his best, even just for five minutes. Florenzi's throw down by Ibrahimovic, but Lozano sprints away with it. Florenzi this time will be booked. He go away with the first one, but here, yes, he got maybe a slight touch on the ball. It was the last kick of the game from Fabian Ruiz that won it at Lazio, they might need a similar outcome tonight just to get a point, Napoli. It will have to be a different hero, however, because Fabian is off the pitch. The other scorer in that game at the Olimpico, Insigne, has also been withdrawn. Koulibaly, that's poor, straight to Rebic, who tried to find Ibrahimovic. Kessier is cleared, well in by Elmas. Sombogisa. Di Lorenzo, he's lost it to Teo Hernandez, here come Milan again, Kessier taking charge, Teo Hernandez, Ibrahimovic, 
Teo Hernandez trying to stay on side. Salamakis is free in the middle. Alexis Salamakis tipped over the top by Ospina. Fabulous goalkeeping. And in, belatedly, the corner is awarded. She has a great counter attack. Mario Rui cannot play Teo offside there. But Salamakis should have done better and killed the game. But maybe for AC Milan will be enough. You, you never, you cannot say ever because we've seen everything in this Syria. Well, Seaman really fired up tonight. He has been uh, simmering in terms of his temper, right on the edge. Ospina well, clearly tipped it over the top. Osato spotted in. And now we're into the final minute of the five which have been added. Mertens suggesting Salamakis is taking too long over this. Kessier with the strength. It's another corner off Mertens and Milan can almost begin to celebrate. There are 40,000 inside the Maradona. The Rossoneri supporters are completely outnumbered. Outnumbered, but you will hear considerable din from them if and when Milan hang on to this advantage. Kessier hanging on to the ball. He's done a really good job. <laughs> so strong. You cannot move him. And actually, won so many seconds there. Please. All smiles for Olivier Giroud. He senses he's the match winner. And Daniele Orsato confirms as much. Milan make the significant move in the title race. One goal did the business in Fori Grotta. He can barely move now. But he was razor sharp with the finish, Olivier Giroud. A week on from the joy of Rome in his disappointment in Naples for Luciano Spalletti. Milan go top of the table. A clean sheet. And they've won in Naples for the second straight year. They now have the belief that they can go on and win the title. Napoli are not out of it yet. But it's Milan who moved top. Napoli lose for the first time in 2022. Full-time score at the Maradona. Napoli nil, Milan won.